look at this. There are just rows of baggage trays and enough conveyor belts for like five roller coasters. <laughs> Renowned for its unparalleled service, Changi Airport sets the gold standard. With this Terminal 2 expansion, the challenge was not just about meeting these guidelines, but exceeding them. How do they do it? Well, I'm here to find out. When I was an architecture student, Singapore was still a young nation finding its feet. But now, 20 years later, I'm clearly not an architect, but Singapore has transformed. From low-rise buildings to gleaming skyscrapers, the relentless pulse of progress keeps the Singapore skyline ever-changing. I'm here to meet the people who are building and shaping our built environment. Look at how different this terminal is now. From the wide open spaces, the 3D sculptured ceiling, and that LED waterfall. This looks like a vision of the future. I'm glad you like it, Enlai. Oh, I certainly am loving it. Zhang Miao, a civil engineer by training, is now an airport planner at Changi Airport Group and a pioneer in using modeling software to help visualize airport capacity planning. Tell me more about the expansion of T2. It can now accommodate additional 5 million passengers, increasing T2's handling capacity from 23 to 28 million passengers a year. That's a lot of passengers. Yeah. How did you make space for an additional 5 million people? Well, we reconfigured T2's departure hall layout, nearly doubling the number of self-checking kiosks and automated backdrop machines. The new layout also helps to orientate passengers and facilitate their flow in a more friendly manner, especially during peak hours. Apart from the reconfiguration of the layout and the update in aesthetics, what are the systems that go on behind the scenes? I can show you more. Let's go. Let's go. So this is a simulation software where we input the passenger behaviour and the future flight schedules. Then we can predict the potential bottlenecks. How do we know that we have a problem? Some red flags would be the long queues forming. We don't want that to happen. So we will look at adding more automated backdrop counters to avert the degradation in our service standard. With the passenger data we have, we can translate that into the baggage data. So with that data, we can predict the baggage system performance. So you've used this technology to introduce five more million passengers per year? Yes, that's right. Forget the dazzling architecture of the new terminal, or even the impressive waterfall. Increasing passenger capacity is nothing if the baggage handling system, or BHS for short, can't keep up. So a lot of design considerations went into this. A new automated early baggage storage facility has been built in T2 to handle bags checked in or in transit more than three hours before the departure flight time. In the first six months of operations, more than 830,000 bags were processed right here in this facility. I feel like I'm in a theme park with a massive roller coaster around me. This is Hanwei senior manager behind the revamp of T2's baggage handling system at Changi Airport. His expertise spans every stage of the project, from planning and design, testing and commissioning, to its daily live operations. Oh, look at this! Those robotic cranes, wow, they, they move so quickly. Exactly. Singapore Changi Airport is one of the busiest airports in the world for international travel. How do you ensure that each bag gets to the correct flight on time, every time? Once the bags enter into the systems, the bags will be scanned by automatic scanner. From there, the system will know where to actually sort the bags. So how do you put all these things together? It has been challenging from the design stage to the construction stage. Imagine that we need to house everything like the mechanical electrical services and the early baggage storage facility equipments under one roof. So we need to actually deconflict them while we do not compromise our maintenance accessibilities. And all these are incorporated in the 3D computational modeling software. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. It's like a virtual blueprint. Because it's digital, everyone involved in the project, from the architect to the engineer, can see this model and how everything fits together before it's built in real life. And CAG uses BIM to manage any construction challenges, such as spatial clashes. 
This is one of the areas whereby we have a major clashes. I'll give you a glimpse of how we finally built it. Philip started out as a civil engineer with Changi Airport back in 2007. Over the last decade and a half, he has been a personal steward and executor of the many phases of development the airport has undergone, including the construction of Jewel Changi Airport. There's a pretty low headroom here, so be careful. Oh, oh my back. There are so many things going on here. It's like a 3D maze. Indeed, because we are hemmed in with the existing building, a lot of services have been crammed into this existing building ceiling spaces. But with the help of BEAM, we should be able to solve it. Would you describe the baggage handling system as the intestines of a building? We don't call it intestine, we call it the heart. Oh, why? Wow, even more serious. This is one of our core infrastructure to support airport operations. Did you face any other clashes inside Changi Terminal 2? Definitely. Let me bring you there to show you more. So you're yeah, looking at the portion of uh, clash that we have in between 36 and 37. The original intent of the design was all the way up. But look at 36, we have no choice but to lower down because there's a lot of ME services that is blocking it. So this is exactly where we are standing. So this belt 36, right. this bulkhead here was created to fit all the ME stuff, right? Right. So I think this is the one that causes the whole ceiling to go down. So how did you envision all these changes? We started from a cloud scanning process. Point cloud scanning utilizes a 3D camera which captures data by shooting laser beams. These lasers bounce off everything they hit, and the scanner records the exact location of each hit. With all this data, the scanner builds a massive collection of points, known as a point cloud, and is integrated with the BIM model. So this is a 3D beam drawing of what we have. We are directly standing here. So this is level one. So as we go up, all the way to level two. So basically, it just visualizes the whole place for you. Yep. So there is a saying in the industry, actually, we uh, build a terminal twice, one digitally, one actual. This is really amazing. It's totally reimagined the way you build things, right? right? If we don't have this, basically, we go to the old method, we do the drawing, try to map out what's happening, and most of the instances, even when they install on site, you'll be abortive work. So it's one of the technology that we decided to embrace it on day one. This full beam model will be then passed to our maintenance team for their future maintenance usages. It is truly remarkable to witness the seamless integration of technology with traditional industries like construction. Not only have these advancements in technology improved the way we live, but also the way we construct. From forecasting potential bottlenecks to mitigating time-consuming construction clashes, digital tools like VIN map out the real world into the digital world, enabling engineers and planners like Chang Miao, Hon Wei and Philip to not only plan airport operations, but to create a world-class user experience.